Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, we invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 167. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another great show in store for you. Today, I'm actually recovering from some minor surgery, so we're going to do a rebroadcast of one of our most downloaded episodes in reference to starting a newspaper or magazine, local newspaper or magazine. I know you're probably shaking your head, oh, print is dead, it's all digital, but you're wrong. So there's a lot of money still out there in the print industry. So stay tuned and check out today's episode. And please spread the word to all your family, friends, and relatives about Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. We'll be back live next week. I'm your host, Jay Jones. And today we have another great show in store for you. Today we're going to start in a series that I'm titling Businesses You Can Start in 2017 for Very Little Money. There's a series we're going to do, Businesses You Can Start in 2017 for Very Little Money. And I'll come back to this periodically from maybe every other week. Not sure how often I'm going to do it. But the first business I want to talk about is how to start a profitable newspaper or magazine. Today's topic, how to start a profitable newspaper or magazine. Now, I know the first thing you're going to think about is that print is dead. But you're absolutely wrong about print being dead. Now, through my experiences, I used to work for Gannett, which is the owner of the USA Today newspaper. And I used to work for one of their local papers. And I was a top advertising sales guy selling print and digital. Uh, Now, And subsequent to that, I started a digital agency where I was doing all digital. And in addition to that, I created a print magazine called the self-employment guide this was years ago and it was a uh, business opportunity type magazine it was obviously a magazine for people who wanted to be self-employed and were looking for business opportunities and it was distributed around the philadelphia area i did it for over a year it was profitable but i had moved on to something else because i got tired to be quite honest i got kind of bored with it (laughs) in retrospect i should have thought about building a media empire you know so I screwed that up but I'm I'm actually looking to possibly get back into that and uh, hiring a sales staff and creating different media you know media organization with different uh, publications of that nature so we're going to talk about how to start a profitable local newspaper or magazine the key word is local and the first thing I want to discuss is print versus digital with digital, okay, even newspapers like the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Philadelphia Daily News, the Baltimore Sun, uh, you know, Washington Post, they're losing their print advertisers. And that's across the board. Magazines, national magazines are losing their print advertisers. If you ever looked at Black Enterprise Magazine 10 years ago, versus what it looks like today it's probably half of what it was in terms of the number of pages and the reason being is because people are going digital but the caveat is those are national people there's tons of local businesses your mom and pop businesses that only want to focus on people maybe in a five to ten mile radius digital advertising is is still good for them But they know a lot of people still look at print. And I'll give you a great example. Walk into any supermarket or convenience store, and most of them are going to have a rack of publications. 
These are free publications. And you know what's in those publications? Advertisers. And most of them are local advertisers. Okay? So print is not dead. All right? I want you guys to know that. And that's a good thing. Because sometimes when people zig, you might need to zag. You might need to swim against the stream to be profitable. So digital is great for national and international businesses or large companies that want to reach a large amount of people. So when you see these companies, you're on websites surfing around and you see these ads pop up, a lot of times they're, they're you know, well, you can, you can do local ads, you know, obviously because you can target, you know, uh, an area, but most of them are larger companies, okay? So even local newspapers, when I say local, I'm talking about big local newspapers, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, you know, New York Post, New York Daily News. They're losing their print subscribe, I mean, print advertisers because number one, it's costly, and number two, they're going digital. But the, even these papers know that it's tough. But now, if you're talking about creating a local newspaper or a magazine that it may go to a five, ten mile radius. Now what you're focusing on is you're focusing on the mom and pop businesses, the restaurants, the dry cleaners, the uh, carpet cleaners, these local businesses that need to attract local customers. And so that's where print is really alive. Okay, a lot of these small guys, they're not worried about attracting business 30, 40, 50, 100 miles away. If they're a, uh, you know, a restaurant or things of that nature, they know their bread and butter is local. And so there's a market there to service that type of local business. And that's what what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to break it down into a local newspaper and also a local magazine. So once again, print is not dead. It's dead if you're a national publication like Black Enterprise, even Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine. Their print ads have decreased, you know, year by year. Their digital platform is good. You know, and they're getting ads on their digital, but still, digital is great for national and international exposure, especially for the larger companies. And there's a thing called programmatic advertising, and I'm not going to get too technical, but what that is, is it, and also contextual advertising. So programmatic, all it is, is it's almost like when you search a site, um, and if you are searching for, you know, best new cars for 2017, you know, you may notice after you go and, and go to other sites, you've been retargeted. If you click on an ad, you know, maybe you click on an ad for BMW or whatever, you'll see that ad follow you. Now, that's retargeting. But programmatic means that based on your search, people are going to look at what you're searching for and they're going to serve you ads that you may have some type of interest in. And it's all done by computers and people, you, you don't see it. It's a bid for that ad space. So I may have an ad out for Acura and another company has an ad out for BMW. Based on that bid, you know, it determines what ad will show up when you're surfing the web. Okay. And so now in contextual advertising, you know, if you're searching for, you know, uh, exercise equipment, you're going to start seeing that stuff pop up unless you block the cookies on your computer. So digital is great and it does work in a local uh, aspect too. But a lot of smaller businesses aren't digital savvy. They don't know about it. They don't think it works. And people still look at print. So let's first talk about, number one, local newspapers. And I'm going to give you some real numbers. Okay. Um, I've had the opportunity of, um, you know, one of my good friends used to work at uh, Philadelphia Tribune, which is the oldest black-owned newspaper in the country okay and I worked there as a consultant for a while and what I saw was it was it was disheartening you know and he always talks about starting a black newspaper in Philly because the Tribune has lost its way the young people don't know about it they're not doing a lot of advertising and the only advertising that they're getting is from the big boys like the Fords the GMs and it's a top heavy paper it doesn't cater to the mom and pop businesses because the rates are ridiculous. They're out of whack. 
that's a whole nother story but you know <laughs> and the reason is the the president and, and 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 owner of the company he's lining his pockets from all these big ads and he doesn't care about the small guy the the black businesses in, in philly because his rates are higher than the philadelphia inquirer and the daily news but his distribution and circulation is is, is less than a quarter or what the other newspapers are. So nobody's going to advertise with them except the big boys who most times have set asides for black media. You know, black newspapers, black radio, black TV, a lot of companies have set asides for that. You know, that's a whole, once again, a whole nother story. But let's get back to print and let's talk about a, a local newspaper and then we're going to talk about a local magazine. Okay. When I say a local newspaper, I'm talking about something like your shopper's guide, a tabloid newspaper that you can open up. And, and a tabloid, if you know the size of uh, the Star, not Star Magazine, but the National Enquirer or Globe, that's a tabloid. Philadelphia Daily News is a tabloid. A tab is what you open from left to right. Okay? That's a tab. You know, a broad page is one that you got to flip down, New York Times, and then open up. So we're talking about a tab, uh, tabloid newspaper, and it's normally about 11 and 3 eighths by 12 inches, okay, like a square. Now, you can print a 10,000 10, 12-page newspaper, full color, for $849, and I'm going to repeat that. So your newspaper, the actual printing of your paper of 10,000 papers, you can get it for, you can probably get it a little cheaper. But $849, that's a 12-page full-color newspaper. Now, your newspaper could have some articles in it. You know, it could have um, uh, advertorials where an advertiser gets to tell their own story. It could be full of ads like a shopper's guide, or it could be a combination. It could have crossword puzzles, anything you want to put in there. But if you you create a 12-page newspaper, right, and it's eight hundred and forty nine dollars that's nothing that really is nothing for twelve pages all right so now let's look at creating your ad rates all right and I'm just giving you what what locally around the Philadelphia area small publications charge all right full page ad nine hundred half page ad five hundred quarter page ad three three hundred an eighth of a page a hundred dollars business card. Uh, size ad or classified sixty dollars. All right. Now, let's take this into account. Now, you can distribute your papers one of two ways. You can have them mailed by the uh, U.S. Postal Service with using Every Door Direct. That costs you seventeen and a half cent for a newspaper that size. So let's say that we have ten thousand newspapers. Cost you seventeen and a half cents. Let's just say eighteen cents. So that means if you mail those out to a radius and you can go in by zip codes, neighborhoods, or whatever, it's going to cost you about $1,800 to mail and $849 to print. So all in, your cost is $2,649. All right. So that's to print and mail your newspaper. Of course, you're going to have to get somebody that can do the graphics and do the ads, but a lot of businesses already have ads created. All right. So now your cost is twenty six forty nine that's to print and mail okay you have twelve pages if your average revenue on a page is eight hundred dollars okay eight hundred dollars now remember a full page is nine hundred half page is five hundred quarter page three hundred an eighth of a page a hundred you got business card size ads for sixty and classifieds for sixty but let's just say your average cost per page or revenue per page is eight hundred dollars. Now, what's what's real funny about this? If you're not in the advertising business, if on an eighth of a page, that means that's four hundred dollars. That means I can put eight of those ads on that page. So my ad revenue for that page, if I had eight eighth of a pages, would be eight hundred dollars. Okay. Now, peep this. If you're doing a quarter page ads, right? Those are three hundred dollars. Quarter page ads, you can put four of those on the page times three hundred dollars. That's twelve hundred dollars a page if you sold four quarter page ads. 
if you're selling a half pages for 500 you got two half page ads on there that's a thousand dollars in revenue for that page and if you're doing a full page which is nine hundred dollars in this example then you'd make nine hundred dollars per page okay on average so my thing is let's go eight hundred dollars a lot of people are going to take the the hundred dollar ads some are going to take the three hundred dollar ads but the great thing is if <laughs> you take the smaller ads it's not going to hurt you in terms of your average revenue per page so let's go back to the scenario so you have a 12 page newspaper times an average revenue of eight hundred dollars per page gives you a gross of ninety six hundred dollars and we're talking about a monthly publication that's ninety six hundred dollars all right now you have to subtract your printing cost of eight hundred forty nine dollars okay and your mailing cost if you're going to mail the newspaper using every door direct by the u.s postal service that's eighteen hundred dollars your net profit is sixty nine hundred and fifty one dollars all right just say sixty nine hundred dollars that's a net profit now if you're not good with graphics you may have to pay a graphic artist they may cost you twenty twenty five dollars an ad something like that or you could add it into you know to the uh, advertising you may say okay my my quarter page is three hundred dollars but if you don't have a graphic artist, I'm going to have to add twenty five dollars for graphic design fee, and you just kick that off to your graphic designer. Okay, so that's a net profit of sixty nine hundred dollars for the month. People are making a living doing this all over the place, and that's for a local newspaper in full color. Okay, so the 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 benefit to the local advertiser is Mr. and Mrs. Uh, restaurant. I'm going to mail these 10,000 papers each month to customers in and around within a five to seven mile area of your restaurant and you're going to have coupons or whatever in the advertising and we're going to help you generate business all right so for that quarter page ad it's only three hundred dollars so this is what you have to realize so in order to get into 10,000 houses for three hundred dollars that costs three cent a, 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 for, uh, per per person so ha- this advertiser you're telling them hey it's only going to cost you three cent a person to get to 10,000 people your three hundred dollars are going to 10,000 people meaning that you got in this guy's house for three cent you can't even buy a stamp for that with stamps now 47 40 I don't even know what they are now so now you're getting exposure in 10,000 houses for three cent a house hello and it's delivered by the US Postal Service now of course not everybody's gonna read it and not everybody's gonna pull out that that ad with that coupon on it. but guess what they're already advertising in other places they're advertising in Valpac they're advertising in money mailer they're advertising in the local clipper magazine all you want to do is divert some of those funds into your local publication okay so we're talking about one publication mail into a radius of seven to ten miles you know you pick out you know where the center of town is where the businesses are you pick out the zip codes around there and trust me these business owners they know all about that they've been approached as soon as they open the doors so now you have an opportunity you can net sixty nine hundred dollars a month selling ads and here's the great thing about advertising excuse me I get some water here's the great thing about advertising once you have a client and your your newspaper is working for the client they're always going to come back you're building residual and one of the great things to do is you give exclusivity okay now it's hard to give exclusivity in restaurants but you may say all right I'm going to limit this to two pizza restaurants two seafood restaurants two steak restaurants or whatever but you want to be able to give exclusivity to make people take you up on their offer okay and that's all about sales and it's all about uh, positioning yourself and positioning your publication okay so that's a local newspaper I'm just going to rehash the numbers you're printing 10,000 newspapers full color full color full color papers 12 pages in the newspaper 
cost of printing is eight forty nine. Cost of using U.S. Postal Service every door direct mail is about eighteen hundred dollars. So you're spending about twenty six hundred and forty nine dollars um, for the newspaper. If your average revenue per page is eight hundred dollars, you're grossing ninety six hundred dollars. So you got the ninety six hundred dollars minus your printing and your mailing cost of about twenty seven hundred nets you sixty nine hundred dollars minus any graphic cost. All right. Now, if you don't want to mail the newspapers with the U.S. Postal Service, you can go around and create your own route. You can go around and drop the papers off at different restaurants and establishments like a lot of these other businesses do. But if you want hands off, go. All you do is bundle them up and use every door direct. Just go to your postal service and you can go online and they'll give you the zip codes, uh, the whole thing. As long as your newspaper is under 3.3 ounces, I believe, it costs you 17 and a half cent per paper. All right. So local print advertising is not dead. The reason the major newspapers can't you know, or, or losing ads is because they have to charge so much more. You know, they're charging that same one page ad that you may charge nine hundred dollars for. Trust me, I've seen it. That might be three thousand dollars, and that's for one day. You're talking about a monthly publication. They're talking one day. Okay? It'll be in the paper Monday, it won't be in there Tuesday. So that's a big difference. So you can and I'm just using these numbers in your area you may be able to get more per page you may be able to get less but what you want to do is you always want to have a trigger for a new advertiser like I said an eighth of a page for a hundred dollars all right if you get you know eight new advertisers on an eighth of a page your gross page is going to be eight hundred dollars for that page okay what uh, what restaurant can't spend a hundred dollars now you got a hundred dollars spend uh, and going out to ten thousand uh, ten thousand homes, your cost to get in each home is one cent, a penny. And if you can sell your paper, look if it looks good, you know, that's a penny per household. All right, a hundred dollars. You get one person in there eating a good meal, and they're happy. You made your money back. Okay, so local newspapers print is not dead. All right, now. There's several things you're going to need for a local newspaper and a local magazine. All right. You're going to need uh, sales uh, sales contracts. And those are easy. You can get those online. You're going to need a printer that's going to print your paper or your magazine. And, you know, those are easy to find. You want to go for, for newspaper. You want to go with newspaper printers. It's a totally different thing. You know, so you need to make sure you deal with somebody that prints newspapers. All right. And I got a couple, um, you know, that I've dealt with in the past. Um, You also need somebody to do the the ads, the graphic designs. Now, if not, you can you can sub that out. There's a company called InkZoo.com, I-N-K-Z-O-O dot com, where a lot of uh, publications use them because their contract um, uh, advertising or graphics purposes. They make digital ads, banner ads, and all that stuff, and print ads. And I think it costs maybe $39 or whatever. You can you can forward that charge to the advertiser. You're also going to need distribution. Now, for the newspaper, like I said, distribution could be using every door direct mail, which is from the U.S. Postal Service. And it costs 17 and a half cents per piece as long as it's under 3.3 ounces and a 12 and a 12 uh, page paper of this size will be under that so once again you can net about sixty nine hundred dollars less any graphic charges um, per month all right and that's not that's not a lot of ads and the great thing once again guys about this business is once you get an advertiser and they like it they're going to stick with you so you don't have to keep chasing that proverbial carrot okay so that's a local newspaper all right now we're going to switch over now to a local magazine so i know when you go into your convenience stores and supermarkets you see magazines like auto trader you may see a wedding magazine a senior citizens directory a kids directory uh, all kinds of magazines 
and I'm going to tell you one of the best sizes to, to create a magazine is a five by five, five and a half by eight and a half magazine. It's like a, a, a sheet of paper folded in half. Those magazines are great if you want to mail because it, it fits those specs and dimensions. And also it's a nice size people can just grab and pick up, put in their pocketbook, in their pocket or whatever. Now, when we talk about magazines, your printing is going to be more expensive because you're going to have, you know, obviously the colored paper and the heavy weighted 80 to 100 pound glossy paper. So your magazine cost is going to be a little more, but you might be surprised that it's not that much more. All right. So let me give you an example. Um, for 10,016 page. Now, remember, the newspaper was 12 pages. This is 16 pages. 10,016 page magazines and the size is five and a half by eight and a half. You can get them for about twenty five hundred and twenty dollars. OK, so <laughs> that means your magazines are costing you twenty five cents a piece. OK, so think about I actually picked up a, uh, and I always look some I've always been in advertising. So I'll pick up these free magazines all the time. I picked up a magazine. I think it was called Celebrations. And Celebrations is like a wedding magazine or something. Then I got a seniors magazine that it's a directory about senior services. You know, it had senior homes in there, uh, real estate for seniors and all types of stuff. I got to grab some more water, man. My throat is a little sore today. Um, but it has all kinds of senior stuff in there. And your magazine, is, what's great about publishing is you can publish on anything you want. Now, you got to make sure the public wants it, and we'll get into that a little later. But, so, let's do the numbers for a magazine. 10,000 magazines, 16 pages, full gloss, 80-pound weight, 80 or 100-pound, really doesn't make too much difference. That's going to cost you twenty five twenty. All right? That's, that's a good rate right there. That's $0.25 cent a magazine. Now, just say that your magazine rates, now remember you got 16 pages, and this is actually from a company um, that they were trying to get me to start a magazine um, in this area uh, as like a dealer, like a dealership program. And they had reached out to me. And here's, here are their page rates. Full page, five ninety five, Half page, three seventy five, dollars Quarter page, two fifty, dollars And an eighth of a page, one eighty. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, remember, this magazine is only five and a half by eight and a half inches, so it's smaller. So, now, let's take 700, uh, an average sale price of $750 per page, all right? That would be like if I sold two half-page ads, all right? We'll say $750, okay? Average revenue per page. Some pages are going to have a lot of eighths on it. Some may have a lot of quarter pages, a lot of halves, or a lot of fulls, and they're going to be mixed up, Okay? So I'm just saying your average revenue per page is $750. With 16 pages, your gross revenue is $12,000 for that 16-page magazine. Now, your printing cost, like I told you, is $2,520, which nets you $9,480. $9,480. Now, if you want to mail that type of magazine, it's going to cost about 20, 29 cents. So if you mail it to 10,000 people, that's going to net you 6580. So here are the numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Your gross revenue on 16 pages at 750 a page is $12,000. Your printing costs, you subtract 2520 from that, that leaves you 9480. If you want to mail the magazine, it's going to cost you about another $2900 for those 10,000 magazines, and that's going to net you with 6580 minus your graphic design costs. And once again, you can actually charge your customer for that. But most times these businesses advertise in other places, so they're going to have camera ready artwork. All right, that's sixty five eighty. Now, what you see with a lot of these type of magazines is these magazines are usually distributed at, you know, once again, supermarkets, restaurants and all that. People create their own distribution route. Okay? So they're not spending that twenty nine eighty, but what that means is you have to go around and open up maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty 
places that you can leave these magazines. And that causes additional work. So in addition to selling, now you're distributing the magazines too, as opposed to mailing them. But, you you know, a lot of people and a lot of companies do that. Now, if you don't want to do your own distribution and you don't want to mail, you can actually get your magazines put in a lot of these convenience stores and grocery stores using distribution companies, okay? And the two biggest distribution companies are Distributech and Dominion. Distributech, I'm not sure where they're based out of, but Dominion Distributing is in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. But they have a lot of your major supermarkets, so does Distributech. In Philly area, we got a, a convenience store called Wawa that's, that's on every corner, that's everywhere, you know, 7-Eleven supermarkets. Now, for each pocket and how they they make money is they may say, okay, um, at this uh, Wawa or this Acme store, you know, the pocket is going to cost you $12 a month, okay? Now, you may have 100 pockets in 100 different stores, so that may be $1,200 in distribution. But the great thing about these companies is you send them your magazines, your 10,000 magazines or whatever, or your 10,000 newspapers. They're going to go distribute it to the stores you designate. They're going to check on it on a you know weekly basis. Anything that's left over at the end of the month, which hopefully is nothing, um, they'll pull it back and they'll give you a count. And so if you're, you're uh, printing 10,000 magazines and you notice every month, man, I'm only, you know, 7,000 are gone, uh, gone only. I usually get two or 3,000 back. You may want to cut down your printing. So they give you metrics in terms of what your magazine is doing, how many are left, how many are damaged. So there's companies that, you know, that's all they do. If you ever go to a resort area, like if you go to a Virginia Beach in Ocean City, Maryland, if you go to, you know, Orlando, any type of resort area or town, Williamsburg, Virginia, and you walk around and you go into the hotel or you go into the supermarket and all you see are these welcome to, you know, the Virginia Beach. And the magazines are full with nothing but advertising from restaurants, attractions, events, you know, in that tourist area. There are companies that, and I forgot the name of this one company, they have that type of magazine in probably, I think they have about 10 or 12 major uh, vacation spots, and all they do is print. Yes, they have an online component where, you know, people will go online if they want to, but when you're talking about destination spots and vacation, uh, vacation spots, people aren't going to go online. That's more where the print is really heavy it's really big because you come out in the hotel and you say man where are we going to eat tonight uh where, what show is playing tonight let me grab one of these magazines it's not a thing where you're going to get online and say oh i'm in virginia beach virginia let's see what's up because these things are they they proliferate everywhere you go and there's different like i was in myrtle beach well, we used to go every year but a couple years ago and they probably had about five or six different publications doing the same thing so when people say print is dead, it's not dead. It's changed to where print is profitable. And print is profitable on a local and micro uh, areas. Also in, you know, vacation spots. That's where print is profitable. It's for local businesses. If you're doing digital, you can still do digital with local. But most times these business owners, and trust me, I deal with them all day, every day. They like print. Because they can see when somebody comes in with that coupon, right? Okay, now they can tally that. They they know. Digital, you can still do that also. But a lot of times, the sophistication is not there. So let me go over the numbers for a local magazine again. All right, 16 pages, 5.5 by 8.5 size, 10,000 uh, 10, printed, costs you twenty five twenty. All right. Just say your average revenue per page is seven fifty times sixteen pages is twelve thousand dollars gross. Your printing cost is minus twenty five twenty. Then you have to minus if you want to um, if you want to mail that type of magazine, it's going to cost twenty nine hundred. So your net is about sixty five eighty. 
Now, if you don't want to mail and you want to do your own distribution, create your own distribution route, leaving the magazines at different places, hotels, doctor's office, uh, restaurants, you know, high traffic locations, you can do that. That's creating another job. Now, you can hire somebody to do that, but as a magazine or media owner, you want to make sure that publication gets out to the people. So, <coughs> excuse me, you want to make sure that it's out there. If somebody's paying the, for their ad, they want to make sure the ad is out there. You know, so if you got somebody that's doing your distribution, make sure they're not driving off and throwing all the magazines in the in the dumpster and then talking about where's my money. All right. So distribution is key. That's what they're paying for. And you need to make sure that that distribution is on point. If anybody has ever seen, and this is how I know this is such a great business. If anybody has ever seen, um, it's a little publication called Coffee News. So it's not everywhere, but I see it popping up here around Philly, uh, you know, someplace. I see it a lot down in Florida. But Coffee News is a brown sheet of paper, okay? A brown sheet of paper that has ads around the sides. I think it has maybe, I'm not sure, 12 or 16 ads on each side. In the middle, it has a couple of funny stories and maybe Sudoku or crossword puzzle. And what happens is they're they're displayed in a lot of restaurants. Now, in order to be a coffee a coffee news franchise, don't get me don't don't get me the line, but I think it's like seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for you to be able to use the coffee news <laughs> uh, logo on a brown sheet of eleven by fourteen paper. With ads all around it. Now you can create that your damn self. Okay. And what they do is. As a coffee news franchisee. And they're large. You have to do your own distribution. And this comes out weekly. So what you're doing is. You're getting the ads. And the creative. And you're sending it up to coffee news. And they're printing your your 10,000. Or whatever pieces it is. Mailing it back to you. And then you have to go distribute it. And it's crazy. And it's a weekly publication. So when you sign somebody up, you sign them up for four weeks or whatever for the month. But what I'm talking about is a monthly. So the monthly newspaper or a monthly magazine. And like I said, there are media companies out there that are making millions of dollars doing these niche type publications. Now, I'll give you a perfect example. With a local newspaper, you're going to have all types of business. So you could be your hometown Whatever. You can make up any name. It doesn't matter. With your magazines, most times you see that they're niche magazines. Like, for example, I mentioned a senior magazine, a magazine for kids like Metro Kids. Um, Also, you have weddings, um, you know, celebrations is a magazine that's around here. They're based out of Jersey somewhere. So you have all types of different niches. And now you're working on that vertical. If I'm a, if I'm a, a celebrations magazine, I'm, I'm selling ads to everything wedding. You know, wedding locations, photographers, DJs, bands, bridal, things like that. Um, if I'm a senior, you know, magazine, you're going to sell to, you know, places that are affiliated with seniors. You know, it could be hearing aids. Uh, glasses, you know, I've fallen and I can't get up, personal emergency response systems, uh, medical stuff, you know, doctors. So there's a niche for that. So like they always say, they're riches in niches. So print is not dead. It is not dead, but it's best used locally. Micro, locally. You know, if somebody wanted to start a magazine now like a black enterprise, God bless them. I feel sorry for them. Number one is you have to print too many issues to distribute, okay? You'd have to distribute millions of issues, okay? And it's too much. You're not going to get that ad revenue where it's going to be enough to cover that. Now, yeah, you might make some money, but you know how hard it would be to start a a national print publication right now? It's almost impossible unless you just got the money to throw into it. You look at a lot of the magazines. I mean, Time, you know, I don't even think they print anymore. Sports Illustrated is is all online. So all of these type of magazines understand that it's digital if you're going national, if you're going large, national, international, digital. So I tell you this, if you, you know, and I talked about this before. If you want to start, you know, a website based around your passion, that's national. 
you know, you can create active fitness over 40 or whatever. So now you have a national uh, uh, platform. Anybody can go to your website if you're driving enough traffic. The, the question or the issue is, are you going to drive enough traffic for advertisers to pay you? And that is where the problem lies when you're going digital. Unless you have that platform like a USA Today or New York Times where people go to uh, absorb news. Madame Noir, which is one of the biggest, you know, black digital sites right now for black women. They do about 19, was it 19 million or 1.9 million a, a month or whatever. That's eyeballs. But it took it took a while to get there. They can sell digital advertising. They have a specific niche and they got the eyeballs. All right. But in order to create that, you're not going to be able to create that overnight. You know, that's why even local newspapers struggle to sell digital advertising. All right. Triple A dot com. I, I worked for them selling advertising at one time. And so when and I was dealing with hotels, restaurants and attractions and I'm selling from D.C. to New York. That was my territory. So trip away, you know, a hotel would ask me, hey, man, um, how many people have looked on triple dot com and tried to book a hotel in Baltimore? So I do the statistics. Uh, Thirty three thousand. Man, do you think that hotel is going to pay me what Triple A wanted for 33,000 people just searching for a hotel on AAA.com? No. Triple A didn't even doesn't even have the eyeballs that it needs to sell real advertising on digital. Okay? Cuz when people think about Triple A, they don't necessarily think about booking trips. What they're thinking about is, you know, getting your car uh picked up if something happens to it. If you're looking to book a trip, you go to an OTA, which is an online travel agency, Expedia, Kayak, you know, Travelocity, whatever. There's, there's so many of them, it's crazy. That's where the eyeballs are, okay? That's where the digital eyeballs are. you got to have a large platform with the eyeballs to sell digital advertising on a national basis. So digital is good for national, international, worldwide is great. For local, it can be good, but unfortunately, a lot of the local business people don't quite understand it. And I'm out there, and I'm working with these cats every day, you know, in my coaching business. So I coach a lot of businesses, too, on on, on trying to build, you know, sales funnels and things of that nature to get a, uh, you know, predictable recurring amount of business, you know, creating digital and print advertising. All right, so print is not dead, guys. Local and micro uh, like micro and local, you know, papers and magazines are where it's at. And like I said, now just imagine if you're doing that local magazine and that 10,000 pieces that you, you, you're distributing, that may take up, you know, two zip codes. All right. And the great thing about every door direct mail is you can actually uh, pare down and filter who you want this to go to. You can you can determine the ages you know, I want this magazine to be going to homeowners the ages of, you know, 25 to 65 that may have more disposable income. You can do all types of stuff, okay, to pinpoint where you want these magazines or, or newspapers to go if you use every door direct mail. Now, if you use free distribution, anybody that picks it up, they're going to use it, but that's cool too. So, just imagine if you had one in this zip code another one in another zip code, and another one in another zip code. So instead of making uh, for the magazine $6,500 a month, that's 6,500 times three. It's like nine, what, almost uh, $18,000, $19,000. And the great thing about this is once you have an advertiser and it has some semblance of, of, of success with them, they're going to stay in the magazine. They're going to stay in the newspaper. All right? You can build a small media conglomerate. Do you know how many of these companies out here, that, and they? I don't know why they always come to me, but there are magazine publishers out here <clears throat> that want you to be a dealer for them or a quote-unquote publisher where they'll do all of the creative, they'll do all of the content, and your job is to go out and sell 
you send the ads to them they create the magazine like they have a lot of these um industry type magazines lawyers and doctors and then you have lifestyle magazine like that when you go out and you know homes and home improvement magazines and a lot of these are going to charge you a dealership fee or a franchise fee and they handle everything else and you go out and sell but I'm here to tell you it's not that difficult okay to lay out a newspaper or to lay out a magazine okay the printers that you work with they'll tell you everything you need in terms of specs they'll tell you the size of the ads and then when you deal with a graphic you know a contract graphic designer or whoever you give them the specs they know exactly what they're talking about here's the layout of the magazine I need you to lay it out like this designer does it sent to the printer in a PDF whip whip whack your thing gets printed you do your distribution you get that money and you're off and doing it next week. And here's one of the greatest things about this type of business, guys. You're getting paid up front. The magazine or the paper doesn't go out until you got the money from the advertisers. So in the example of the 10,000 newspapers, 12-page full-color newspapers, cost you $849 to print, right? $1,800 to mail. That's $2,649, all right, total. Once you hit that twenty six forty nine in revenues, the rest of it is yours. All right. So, if you're if you're averaging eight hundred dollars a page, right? What's that? Three and a half pages. At four pages, you at thirty two hundred. All right. If you're averaging eight hundred a page, so all you got to do is sell two and a half pages on average. If you're averaging eight hundred a page, and the rest is gravy, straight gravy. So. You're not even coming out of pocket. Now, what you might need to do, and this is what I did with my magazine. My first magazine, I let advertisers come in for free. Not all of them, but I needed a prototype. So what I did was I took some of the biggest advertisers in in that industry that I wanted. I contacted them. Hey, look, I have a new publication. You know, as a courtesy, I want you to come in for free. You can have a full page, half page, whatever you want. And now when I go and and what I would do is I would do a short run, meaning I may print up only 100 magazines. But what I do is I use those as my sales tool. So now with a newspaper, it's easy. You can do a short run newspaper, I mean, with for a couple hundred dollars. You know, hey, look, I need 100 copies of this, 50 copies of this 12 page newspaper. That may cost you a couple hundred bucks. You get the ads free. Now you have a a prototype and you have a sample newspaper. So when you go in the stores or or, or prospective advertisers, this is my paper. And I would recommend you do that, especially if you've never sold advertising before. But this is the type of business you got stay-at-home moms. You got people that are unemployed. You got people that, like I always say, are unemployable. Okay, you have people that are looking for opportunities. And the great thing about creating a media company of this type is if it's done right, you're helping advertisers make money. And if you help them make money, guess what's going to happen? You're going to make money, too. So it's a beautiful symbiotic relationship. And once again, print is not dead as long as it's local and micro. You go large, you're in trouble. You go regional, you're in trouble. You go national, you damn sure in trouble. All right? <laughs> print local. It's local. That's where the money is in print right now. And trust me, I've been in this game advertising, you know, uh, print, digital, you name it, for a minute. Always been in there in some form or fashion. I love looking at ads. You know, just think about how many ads you see. You see the billboards. You see, you know, the digital ads. You see the magazines, you know, the TV all over the place. So, and those are your target customers. The people you want to target. I used to, my biggest thing is I would look at, and I got a, a Val Pack right here and a Money Mailer and a Clipper magazine. So if I'm in the local area and I go in here and I'm about to open up this Val Pack. So this is what you hear. I open up this Val Pack right here. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you a perfect example, all right? 
So we got some company Christmas Catering. We got another HVAC company. We got a company called Blue Crab. Uh, you got a uh, 76ers in here. All right. You got Panda Restaurant, Horizon Services, uh, a couple of diners, Hibachi, uh, man, all kinds of stuff. Uh, what it is, Rick's Tree Service. You know, so you got all Diamond State Tire. Um, you got all of these advertisers in here that are already spending money. And what you want to do is you're not trying to say, hey, don't advertise in Money Mail anymore. What you want to do is you want to have them spread their advertising out. I'm not trying to stop you, Mr. Customer, from advertising in Money Mail or a Val Pack, whatever the hell you're doing. What I want to do is show you an option that may be more beneficial to you, and it's only going to your investment will only be a hundred dollars for the month. That's and I'm just using this as an example of um, of the local newspaper, an eighth of a page. That hundred dollars, Mr. Advertiser, is going to put you in ten thousand homes. That's a penny a home. You can't beat that if you wanted to. Mail uh, one stamp costs forty. Was it forty seven, forty eight, forty nine? Eight. I think they just changed. You can't beat that, Mr. Advertiser. And then you go show them some similar ads or whatever. Bam, locked down. That hundred dollars a month, they're going to pull that right out of their cash register and give it to you. Cash business, you know. Or you can take checks, whatever they want to do. Now, you know, you got Square. So if somebody wants a credit card, set you up a Square account. Make sure you have uh, advertising contracts, you know, invoices. And you don't ever print until you paid up in full. If And you let them know. You know, this paper, your ad won't be in until it's paid in full. The reason, Mr. Advertiser, you know, we can give you these type of rates because we don't have collections. Because everything is paid in advance. That saves us from charging you higher rates. And it's beneficial to everybody. So there ain't no, you know, 30 days terms or none of that. Straight cash. All right. Cash check, you know, credit card. But you will do not run an ad unless you're paid in full. I don't care who it is talking about, oh, I'll get it to you. Nah. So you want to set the tone. And you want to set that expectation level. Don't oversell. You know, a $100 ad, yeah, hopefully you'll get in, you know, decent amount of people. But here's another thing. It's not just the ad. It's what's on the ad. You know, these advertisers have to understand that you need something that's enticing. That's going to bring the customer in. You know, some of the the tips and tricks are you don't use a percentage off. People don't quantify that. You always use a number, $5 off, $10 off, two for one. Uh, you never say 10% off your next meal because people like, ten. I don't even know what the meal is going to cost me. You know, meal might be $10, so I get a dollar off. You know, you want to say a certain dollar amount, good until. You want to have, you know, a, a, a reason for them to use this by a certain time. I mean, just think about the stuff you get in your mail right now. Like I said, I, I got Money Mail or Val Pack. I got Clipper. I'm just sitting here looking at. And, and those are the ones that, co- that comes direct. I got a local paper that comes, like a coupon, you know, paper that comes. And periodically I'll get a, um, a home magazine that comes in every month that I didn't subscribe for. And they're selling all type of home goods. So print is not dead, guys. You can take advantage of this. It's like I said, today's topic, how to start a profitable local newspaper or magazine. And this is just phase one or part one of businesses you can start in 2017 for very little money. Damn, I didn't know I was going to go this long. I wanted to keep it down about 30 minutes, but I got hyped up because this is something that really works. And I've done it before. And if you're in sales, like I said, if you're a stay-at-home mom, If you're a personable person, if you don't mind getting, you know, told no 10 times to get one yes, this is something you can do. But what I want you to understand, it gets easier the more you do it. Once you build up that client base, now it's just a matter of, uh, hey, Joe, yeah, you know, the next edition is coming out. Are you going to run the same ad or did you want to change anything up? Any specials, any promos, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Whip, whip, whap. All right? (laughs) It's not that hard. The problem, the reason why most people fail is 
they don't want to get out there and start talking to people. And here's my mindset. Now, why am I going to go buy a franchise at Coffee News or Metro whatever, Kids or whatever this stuff is, when I can do the same damn thing myself? You know, a lot of these companies want you to be the publisher and you're going to do all the hard work, which is the selling. And you may get 40 or 50 percent of that while, you know, they're sitting back and all they're doing is printing, doing some editorial and printing. Come on, man. You can do this on your own. Now, there may be some times that, okay, maybe you want to start off doing it like that, you know, but my thing is, hey, I'm about trying to do it. It's not that hard. If somebody else can do it. I know I can do it because I've been in this business and I've done it before. I've sold advertising. I've created my own magazine. I've distributed it. Just a reminder, like I said, if you don't want to do your own distribution, you can use Every Door Direct, which is part of the U.S. Postal Service, or you can use two of the biggest distributors uh, out there, Distributech and Dominion Distribution. Those are the companies that you see when you go see those racks in the convenience stores and supermarkets and all that. Those are the two biggest companies that handle that in most metropolitan areas and all over the country. Distributech and Dominion Distribution. I don't know where Distributech is headquartered, but Dominion I know is in Virginia. I think it's in Virginia Beach. So say you wanted to create, if you're living in a resort area, Virginia Beach, Myrtle Beach, Ocean City, Maryland, anywhere like that and you wanted to create a publication you know for for uh, vacationers i mean that's all day every day those hotels and restaurants and attractions they spend big money because they know and those type publications are usually only once a year publications so you may print fifty thousand a hundred thousand of those but they stay there the whole year or the whole season and then next year they come out with another one so you can make couple hundred thousand dollars you know in 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 a matter of five or six months rest get ready for the next season now in those type areas you need to make sure that you're selling in advance of the season you need to sell and produce before the season so if the season starts in may you need to be selling in the previous you know november starting there you know you want to have everything done you know, by May, because June, July, August, September, whatever, are the heavy periods like that. So it all depends. That's taking on a little bit more because you got to do more volume. All right. I was in Ocean City, Maryland on a business meeting uh, about two weeks ago. I stopped at the uh, at a supermarket and I found two local newspapers. And I'm talking about these joints were stacked with ads, two local newspapers and about eight or nine different vacation magazines all stacked with ads so when i tell you when print is not dead it's not dead locally and micro you know micro print and locally and and you know in a small town or seven to ten mile radius around you know businesses it's not dead print is print isn't just newspaper or magazines it's val pack it's money mail all right it's the local coupon paper so it's not dead, guys. Man, I'm going on about this, but I, I just truly believe that this is a great opportunity. You, if, if you are in sales in any form or fashion, if you have any media background in sales, and you don't really need any of them because it's, it's self-explanatory, if, you're, if you don't mind getting out there, knocking on doors, building your platform, and, and creating that, that, that new media that these businesses are looking for, this is a great opportunity for you. You know, there's all kind of cats out there that want to sell you dealerships and all of that. You don't need that. Okay. Damn, I might even make a course on this because this is something I'm so passionate about. And I see the money coming in. You know, I see it coming in. On my magazine, I used to do 10,000 uh, print. Now, I used to do, be even cheaper. My cover was color, but my inside was newspaper pages. So my printing cost was like five hundred dollars, five six hundred dollars, and that magazine would pull in. And this is a couple of years, a while ago, probably eight nine years ago. This magazine would pull in, man, about fourteen, average about fourteen thousand dollars. After my distribution, I was netting about nine ten thousand dollars. 
And so, like I said, it's not hard. The problem is I got bored with it and I wanted to go on to other things. Nine to $10,000, even five, $6,000 net in Hip Pocket National is good money. Now, what you want to do to, because what you want to do is you want to expand. You want to scale. So now, once you have one publication up, if you want to scale, you hire salespeople. All right? You create, let them branch out, go a little bit further out to businesses in the next town. All right? The problem with that is it's hard to get good employees, especially if you're paying them straight commission. So, you know, you may have to give them a base or whatever, but that's how these media companies are built. It's, it's, you know, yeah, media companies are built off the big advertiser, but the mom and pops are always going to be there. So think about it. If it's something that you want to do, just hit me up and I'll, I'll try to help you out. And like I said, today's show, uh, the first edition of businesses you can start in 2017 for very little money. And today's topic was how to start a profitable local newspaper or magazine. Local is the key. All right. So that's today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Next week, we're going to try to do uh, Chronicle My Startup Part 2. We had a little snafu with the the guest that we were going to have on this week. But that's okay because this show, I think, uh, is very important. Like I said, this is something that you don't pay out any money until you bring the money in. All right. But here's the caveat. Don't take people's money if you can't print. You got to make sure you got that money to print. All right, because if not you're stealing money and and that ain't good. I don't I don't condone that whatsoever. If your people are paying for a service, make sure that you provide what you tell them you're going to provide. A little bit of housekeeping guys, please continue to spread the word blackentrepreneurblueprint.com podcast obviously uh every month and I say it and I I love you guys for it. Thank you. Every month we're getting more and more downloads on every show. And that's because of the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. You guys are holding it down and I appreciate you and I love you. Please continue to spread the word. Um, Like I said, and if, well, actually, I will be doing a live show before Christmas. I think this show is coming out with the 19th. Um, So actually, yeah, this will probably, this will be the last show before Christmas. So have a happy Merry, blessed Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Um, Once again, I love you guys. Be safe over the holidays. Uh, Continue to count your blessings. You know, don't think about what you don't have. Think about what you've been blessed with. And we're looking for a prosperous 2017, even though I'll get that into the next show. But you guys have a great Christmas holiday. If you need to connect, J Jones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, J A Y J O N E S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, uh, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint on Facebook and Twitter, J Jones 001. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace. <laughs>